Hello everybody, welcome to the ninth lecture of material technology. In the last lecture we discussed the point defects. In this lecture we shall discuss the line dislocations. Line dislocation is also called as one dimensional defect. A part of line of atoms will be missing from its regular site and this missing row of atoms is called as a dislocation. The dislocation is centered along a line and hence it is called as a line dislocation. Movement of dislocation is necessary for plastic deformation. The dislocation is a boundary between the slipped and the unslipped region and lies in the slip plane. The structure and behavior of dislocations affect many properties of the engineering materials. Types of dislocations There are two basic types of dislocations, edge dislocation and screw dislocation. Edge dislocation If we consider a perfect crystal to be made up of vertical planes parallel to one another and if one of these vertical planes does not extend from the top to the bottom of the crystal but ends part way within the crystal then it is called as edge dislocation. In an imperfect crystal above the edge of incomplete plane, the atoms are squeezed together and are in state of compression. Below the edge, the neighboring atoms are pulled apart and are in tension. Edge dislocations are symbolically represented by an inverted T or T. Depending on whether the incomplete plane starts from top or the bottom of the crystal. The symbols are referred to as positive and negative dislocations. Let's understand the edge dislocation in an alternative way. Consider the hatch region ABFE. A part of the plane marked ABCD The top part of the crystal above the hatched area ABFE is displaced to left by one atomic distance with respect to the bottom part of the crystal. No such displacement is done over the unhatched area EFCD. The displacement thus resulted in an incomplete vertical plane over the edge EF, which now becomes an edge dislocation. The plane ABCD is called a slip plane in dislocation terminology. The region EFCD over which the displacement is not done is called unslipped part of the slip plane. The dislocation line EF is defined as the boundary between the slipped and the unslipped parts of the slip plane. Burger vector The magnitude and the direction of the displacement are defined by a vector called the Burger vector which characterizes a dislocation line. Consider the perfect crystal. If we start from point P, 
go up by two steps then take four steps to the right then two steps down and finally four steps to the left we end up at the starting point here burger circuit is perfect if we do the same operation on edge dislocation the starting point is p and we end up at q we need an extra step to return to point p or close the burger circuit the magnitude and direction of this step defines the burger's vector burger's vector is perpendicular to edge dislocation it is parallel to the slip direction it is parallel to the direction of dislocation line movement and the process by which dislocation may leave the slip plane is the dislocation climb screw dislocation consider the hatched area aefd on the plane abcd let the top part of the crystal over the hatched area be displaced by one interatomic distance to the left with respect to the bottom part let's try to construct the burger circuit starting from point v moving up to two atomic distances reaching the point q going to the right by three atomic distances and reaching the point r moving down by four atomic distances reaching the point s moving to the left by three atomic distances and reaching the point p moving up by two atomic distances and reaching to the point u which is the end of burger circuit for the perfect crystal but after dislocation the starting point v and the end point u are not same hence we need to move one atomic move to reach to the point v which is the starting point this atomic move is called as burger's vector for screw dislocation produce that boundary ef between the displaced and the undisplaced part of the slip plane let t vector be defined such that it points from right to the left the burgers vector is determined by the step needed to close circuit the burgers vector has same direction as the t vector screw dislocations are symbolically represented as follows depending on whether burgers vector and t are parallel or anti parallel these two are referred to as positive and negative screw dislocations or clockwise and anti clockwise screw dislocation burgers vector is parallel to the screw dislocation line it is parallel to the slip direction it is perpendicular to the direction of dislocation line movement and the process by which dislocation may leave the slip plane is cross slip difference between edge dislocation and screw dislocation if one of the plane is not continuous from top to bottom or bottom to top and ends part way within crystal it is called as edge dislocation if plane of atoms follows 
dislocation in helical or screw path. It is called as screw dislocation. Edge dislocations are of two types, positive and negative dislocation. Screw dislocations are of two types, clockwise and anticlockwise dislocation. In edge dislocation, dislocation line and burgers vector are perpendicular to each other. In screw dislocation, the dislocation line and burgers vector are parallel to each other. In edge dislocation, the direction of dislocation line movement is parallel to the burgers vector. In screw dislocation, the direction of dislocation line movement is perpendicular to the burgers vector. The edge dislocation can be removed from slip plane by dislocation climb mechanism. The screw dislocation can be removed from slip plane by cross slip mechanism. That is it for this lecture. In the next lecture, we shall discuss the surface defects. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.